Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new Nike Vaporfly Next% 3, and it looks different than the Vaporfly Next% 2, feels a lot different than the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2, and it performs a lot differently than the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2. But are all those differences a good thing for you? Let's get into it. Now, straight away, my favorite part of the Next% 3s is their uppers. I, I feel like they've engineered these almost just perfectly for like a really fast racing shoe. If you look at them under the microscope, you do get a macro waffle pattern that gets really wide right in the center of the forefoot. Then it gets a little bit narrow on the outsides and you get a little bit of these fibers of flying it going all the way around the periphery to keep a little bit of structure and containment. But then on the inside, you get that micro chain linking around all those waffle perforations. So you're getting a ton of strength in a very compact, very breathable package. If you look at these on the breathability test, they just blew everything out of the water. They only heated up 88.6 degrees, cooled down 54.9 degrees. And when I had my hand going around the shoe to see where the heat was being expelled, there wasn't one spot on the shoe where I couldn't feel the heat radiating out of there and blowing out of the shoe, except for right here on the medial side, right where the densest area of weaving was here with those fly knit fibers. Everywhere else, heat was just blowing out of the shoe. And then when I took the heat gun off, the craziest thing was, when I put my hand on the uppers, I always put it on to see how hot they're going to be. And usually they're really hot to the touch. These were like lukewarm to the touch. They cool after about 30, 45 seconds, they were still cool to the touch. So it is just crazy how well these things expel heat and allow air to circulate. And you really need that for these shoes because they're meant for really long pavement type runs when you're on just searing hot pavement. And right now on the market, I have not seen anything even close to these in terms of keeping your feet cool and allowing air circulation. But what I really like that Nike kept on the Vapor Flies was this nice little ankle collar back here. It really does kind of cinch you down as long as you're using a runner's knot in there. The lace eyelets are all reinforced with this wax and the tongue is just a tad thicker in a couple places to give you just a little bit more comfort with the laces. It is still a super thin tongue. You still get those braided laces. They are flat. They do contact the dorsum of your foot pretty intimately. So remember, it's not the most plush ride out there, but definitely an upgrade from the twos. You know, on the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper. I mean, the burr just rips right through this stuff. You know, that sandpaper just grabs that fly knit fiber. And especially because the waffling is so wide, just rips right through it. In terms of blunt force containment, I think they are pretty good. However, in terms of anything abrasive, and just make sure they're on smooth asphalt or concrete. Beginning into the midsole teardown, this is where I was most intrigued. I mean, it looks a lot like the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, kind of the same orientation where you have the carbon fiber fly plate right sandwiched between the Zoom X and it dips really down low in the forefoot to give you a ton of Zoom X foam underneath the ball of your foot. However, it's what the Zoom X foam is made of that's the big difference. A much more pillowy type Zoom X foam, a lot softer. It does not feel like styrofoam or packing peanuts under your foot like some other Pebex or Peba type products or nylon type products products do, it almost feels like a super, super soft EVA blended with Zoom X. So you are getting a little bit more plush comfort, but with similar performance to previous versions of Zoom X. If you look at these on the single leg jump height test, 20 centimeters of single leg jump height on these. And then on the bounce height test, I got 37.5 centimeters in the heel, which doesn't seem that great compared to some other Zoom X products. However, remember it is because that carbon fiber plate is right underneath there and that just doesn't give you a lot of bounce. You go into the forefoot and got 45 centimeters of bounce height on these. So it just shows you the more Zoom X you have underneath that ball bearing, the more bounce you're gonna get. And then in terms of jump force or cantilevering, that full length plate, that full length fly plate in there is just tremendous. Even when just trying to generate force from static stance on one foot. But when you look at the periphery of the midsole and Next% 3, that's where you can really tell the design differences between the twos and the threes. Uh, number one here in the back of the heel with the different shaped cutouts here on lateral versus medial, as well as the cutout here in the lateral midfoot. I'll get to that when we get into the runnability section, but just suffice it to say, this is definitely meant for a broader range of runners just by how they started cutting out weight and actually adding foam to certain parts of the shoe. It's pretty interesting, but we'll get to it in a minute. And getting into the outsole tread, this is kind of like what's old is new again. If you look at the forefoot, it's just a traditional waffle pattern, same as on some of the most early Nike shoes, the earliest Nike Cortez shoes. And then in the rear foot, you actually get like a rumble strip pattern or a step down pattern, especially on the lateral side, but also medial side. And that's designed for more of a heel striker, at least a more posterior midfoot striker, because you come down on the highest plate of rubber and 
then you start stepping down as your foot rolls from heel to midfoot into the forefoot, which you know shows you where these shoes are going from the twos into the threes. And I like that pattern because number one, it's able to save a lot of weight in rubber, right? You get a lot more cutouts, a lot more airflow in there. Your foot is just contacting less rubber as you're going through the gait cycle. And as we know, contacting the ground less leads to better performance, you know, less injuries and just, you know, faster speeds. And speaking of speed, if you look at them on the speed ratio, they came in at 5.41, which, I mean, these aren't even playing the same sport as other shoes. I mean, this is just blowing everything away. I, I thought I had a shoe earlier in the week that had a crazy speed ratio. This just knocks them completely out of the water. Now, number one, that is, you know, the bounce to weight ratio of the shoe. But, you know, in just in real world terms, you know, these things cut through the air so easily. Number one, with the air channels built into the medial side and lateral side of the shoe. Number two, to the step down pattern of the rubber and foam on the bottom of the shoe, just allowing just max airflow through the shoe. But number three, the uppers of the shoe, remember the lace line is divergent. So your tibialis anterior has a lot easier time throwing the shoe through the air when you're coming in through the last part of your swing phase of gait. Number two, there's so much airflow through the shoe, super aerodynamic here in the forefoot. So it's really no surprise that these are just crazy in terms of speed. And on the outsole durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, almost a millimeter of damage on the heel rubber and almost a millimeter of damage on the forefoot waffling rubber. But remember, this is very wide rubber and these are meant to be struck very efficiently. Remember, the shoe is meant for efficient running. So I think it's more the shoe's ergonomics and biomechanics that are gonna make these last a little bit longer than previous versions of the Vaporflies. And the, the, the durometer is fine. It's actually pretty decent for a running shoe, especially for a road shoe. But getting into the fit of the Vaporfly next percent three really pleasantly surprised the heel on the ankle collar is still pretty form-fitting you do suck into there pretty good however once you get past the midfoot the shoe really does open up a lot more now it still does have an inflare on the forefoot for sure but much more forgiving forefoot so a narrow medium even a wide foot i think just go true to size on these a 2e i think can break these in just because the fly knit is pretty accommodating the waffle pattern is pretty wide in terms of the snake bitten foot really anything ball of foot related these are tremendous tremendous for However, the rear foot of these is still a tad unstable unless you are a very elite heel striker or kind of other type strike patterns, which we'll get to in the runnability section. But suffice it to say, you still might get a little bit of wobble if you're not an elite runner on these in, in terms of a heel striker. So I think anything kind of heel related, Achilles related, if you are a four foot striker, I think these are fine for. Anything else, yeah, like I said, you can try to get a custom orthotic in these, a razor thin custom orthotic, but um, maybe just look somewhere else. You know, like I said, these are meant for racing. They are meant for speed. They're not necessarily meant for like your daily comfort trainer. And speaking of all the snake bites you can get from running, training, really anything else athletic you might be doing, I am offering one-on-one -on -one consulting. I do have a link in the description down below now. Just really anything, if you're going through issues that just really haven't been resolved, can't get good information, or just haven't been able to see someone that really kind of understands your particular problem with your particular sport. So if you do want to check that out, leave a link in the description below. All right. Runnability of Vaporfly Next% 3. This is gonna make some people really angry, I think, with Nike, and other people, I think, are going to absolutely love it. Because the Next% percents have always been like a really elite running type shoe. Even on, printed on here, the original super shoe designed for podiums and PR is built to world standards. Now, most people, when you talk about that, you're talking about a super efficient forefoot striker or very distal midfoot striker, right? Well. These are designed to allow people with a more midfoot, posterior midfoot, or even a heel striking gait to get into Nike Super Shoe lineup. You can tell, I mean, it's just, you got clues all the way around the shoe. Number one is the cutout in the heel. That's the first thing I noticed. On the Vaporfly shoes and the Alpha Fly shoes, they usually come to a really crazy point in the back. Number one, to reduce weight. Number two, to reduce drag in your backswing when you're kind of coming through the swing phase of gait. However, on these, you get this jut out of foam here in the back of the heel, and that's to allow more stability when coming down on a heel striking gait. And the reason it's lateral is because when you're heel striking, you better be coming down lateral because that's really the only way you get an efficient roll off. You can't come down medial. And that's why they're still a little bit medially unstable, but laterally they're a lot more stable in the shoe. Number two, you get this compression point here right in the midfoot of the shoe. This is to allow that Zoom X foam to compress a little bit easier and allow your lateral foot to compress a little bit easier in the shoe. And that's for a more traditional midfoot striking gait. You also see with the rubber, you get a ton of rubber on the lateral side of the shoe 
through. And this step down pattern here, why else do they put that unless they're wanting you to be able to do that or a heel striker to be able to do that. You also get a really wide, almost lateral flange on the bottom here, the next trend threes in the very proximal portion of your forefoot in that waffling pattern. And that's to allow you to catch that portion of the shoe a lot more still in coming down. And I noticed with me, you know, I'm more of a posterior midfoot striker to true midfoot striker if my technique is, you know, if I'm really focusing on my technique, I'm more of a true midfoot striker. But I noticed that these, so much more forgiving on the midfoot striking versus on previous iterations. I did not feel unstable in these. Even when I was coming down heel striking, really did not feel all that unstable. And because that carbon fiber plate does go all the way back in the shoe, and because that Zoom X foam, like I said, just a little bit more dense, a little more pillowy, I think you're gonna get a little bit more durability for someone that strikes those patterns versus previous versions of the shoe, which just weren't designed for it. So, you know, really a forgiving heel strike, forgiving midfoot strike, and you get a little bit of that pogo sticking effect that you do when you strike these forefoot or when you struck previous versions of the Vaporfly forefoot. Cause you know, you know, if you're a forefoot striker and you use these, I mean, like I said, they feel like a pogo stick. It's bouncing almost like a moon shoe down the road. Whereas on the next percent threes, you get a little bit of that feeling when you're striking midfoot and when you're striking on the heel. As soon as you kind of complete that roll, go from a little bit of that pronation back to supination, that's when you feel these start to pogo stick for you again. Though really, not a lot change for the forefoot striker. They're still tremendous. It's just that, you know, these allow entry for a lot of other running types to get into the vapor fly line. And I think you'll see a lot more recreational runners, people that aren't trying to win their local race, get into these shoes, I think you're gonna see a lot more of them on the road just because they're gonna accommodate a lot more people. Like I said, if you are immediately unstable, posterior tibial tendonitis, really hypermobile flat foot, they're still not gonna be stable enough for you, right? You still have to be like an elite heel striker to get them or an elite midfoot striker. You better have a really tuned gait. So, but um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these. If you're gonna try to grab them, if you are someone with more of a posterior midfoot strike, true midfoot strike or heel strike, I'd love to hear it down in the comments down below. And if you wanna see their sibling to the Vaporfly Next% 3, the Nike Alpha fly next percent to going to the knife make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below respect your rubber and foam see you in the next one